Today, we're looking at Try Hack Me as a means to get into cybersecurity. And given its diversity of content across the disciplines of cybersecurity, as well as difficulty, it's a resource that we can't ignore. We'll run through the main features, but also look at how and when to use each of them to get the most out of our study time. Traditional privileged access management products are ugly, expensive, difficult to deploy, and of course, difficult to use. And that's why I trust Keeper. Keeper's securities, next generation privileged access management solution delivers enterprise grade password, secrets, and privileged connection management in one unified platform. Unlike legacy PAM solutions, Keeper is fast and easy to deploy, agentless and clientless, and has no implementation fees. Plus, Keeper is FedRAMP authorized. Thousands of organizations rely on Keeper to defend against breaches, and you can start your 14 day free trial at keeper.io slash TCM. And of course, there is a link in the description below. As always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. Before we dive into Try Hack Me, let's take a look at the main features to try and figure out what makes it a great platform for skill development. And all we'll need is a free account. So sign yourselves up and let's take a look. All right, so let's take a quick look at some of the main features. And I've just logged in. Of course, you can sign up a free account and looks like I've lost my streak once again. I'm not sure what my uh, longest streak was, but I, I regularly think oh, I'm going to do a streak now and it goes all horribly wrong two days later. So here on the dashboard, you've got your main stuff. So you can see how you're progressing as you can see, like, you know, recent rooms and some skills matrix and your level and all sorts of stuff. Nice to have, but not really where you're going to be most of the time. Most of the features come in here in the learn section. And let's take a quick look what we have. And we'll talk about these in more detail, in particular, the learning paths, because I think this is the best place to start. But we have learning paths and we have new cloud training, which I'm yet to check out, but stay tuned. I'm going to dive into this hopefully sometime next month. And we've got modules, which there's some really great modules in here. The Web Suite one's quite good. Vulnerability Research one is interesting. Red Team Fundamentals is great. And Post Compromise, Compromising Active Directory. These are all really great modules and teach you topics as well, rather than just single attacks or single vulnerabilities or techniques. They actually teach you about the topic as a whole so that you can really take your skills to the next level. And again, we'll talk about this a little bit in the next section. And then as usual, I always recommend that people, if they want to go from beginner to intermediate, work on networked machines. So those are the main things. And then of course, if we come to learn and we come to search, you can filter by things like capture the flag and stuff like this. So come in and do all of the CTFs. Oh, I haven't done this one. And there's still plenty to do, even though I've spent a lot of time doing these boxes. And finally, there's a couple of things. So the king of the hill, really, really good. We'll talk about that in a minute. And I think that this isn't just for people who want to compete. The king of the hill boxes are super interesting because they usually have lots of different points of entry. So getting a user shell, for example, there are always different ways to do it. And so that gives a nice challenge as well rather than just finding the single entry point from the person who built the CTF. And at the end, we'll talk a little bit about developing your own rooms. So that gives you a whirlwind tour of Try Hack Me. And let's take a look at how we can use the platform to level up our skills. All right, with our tour out of the way, let's take a look at where we need to start. So if you're new to cybersecurity, then pathways are the best place to begin. Instead of just trials by fire, they actually teach you what you need to know and help you build your skills with exercises. So for complete beginners, if you're sitting here thinking, I feel like cybersecurity is for me, but I don't know where to begin, the complete beginner path is going to give you the best starting points. You might have to repeat some rooms or go back and do some further study to really get the topics down, but the content that's covered in that is going to be with you for your entire career. Now, I should mention that this path does lean a little bit more into the offensive side of things, which sets you up nicely for paths into things like penetration testing and red teaming, but if you're keen on becoming something like a SOC analyst or doing forensics, then there are still plenty of options to continue on to after you've finished this path. 
for example, the security engineer path or the SOC level one paths are a great continuation after you're finished. Okay, so now that we're done with our paths, what do we do next? Well, it's time to start taking on some of the easier CTF boxes. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I recommend setting a timer for these to help you not waste entire days on small oversights, especially when you're just starting out. Let me explain the method. Set something like a 30 or 45 minute timer and start working on the box. If the timer goes off and you're completely stuck, i.e. you have nothing else that needs exploring and you've exhausted all of your ideas, then take a peek, and I do mean just a peek, at the walkthrough. Figure out what the next step is and use that to help you continue. Then set another timer and continue the box on your own. This is going to give you a good balance of troubleshooting and problem solving, as well as not being a complete time sink. And of course, make sure that you update your notes as you go and highlight the things that you overlooked or got stuck on. After a while, you'll start to develop some intuition for CTFs and you'll start to see patterns of similar attacks in slightly different situations. The more you do this, the better you get. Like most things in life, it's just a simple game of numbers. Now, as you're doing boxes, I sometimes recommend to create write-ups. And even though there are a lot of write-ups for every box that exists, doing this helps challenge you to really understand what's going on. It's hard to create a write-up for something that you don't understand very well. So if you feel like you did a box, but you're not entirely sure on something like how or why an exploit worked, challenge yourself to create a write-up that will force you to do the extra reading or research needed to to fully understand it. It's often said that to really understand a topic that you should try and teach it. And I think generally that is true. And write-ups are an accessible way to start doing that on top of the other benefits like helping you solidify information and recall it at a later date. Another cool feature that I don't see many people using is the king of the hill. And you might be thinking, ah, that's really only for top CTF players or whatever. But actually these boxes have a load of different ways to get shells. and. So what I recommend you do is try one and instead of just getting root and being like, okay, done, I've written my username to king.txt, try finding every method of getting in. Being thorough and looking for alternative paths instead of just a single entry point is going to help you become a better security practitioner in general, regardless of the career path that you choose. And for our final section, going beyond the basics can be tricky, but there are a few things that we can do and Try Hack Me has some great features to help us go from beginner to intermediate and beyond. First up, we have modules that cover so many topics, it's frankly unreal. So if you're on the blue side, you can look at things like endpoint monitoring, learning to use tools like Snort, Wireshark, and understanding threat detection methodologies, and really begin your journey into things like detection engineering. For the red side, we have specific topics like what to do post-compromise, active directory attacks, security tool evasion, and threat emulation. Some of these things can be found in CTFs, but gaining a holistic understanding of something and learning about the technology is way more important than being able to pull off a single trick like Kerberosting, for example. I would always recommend you learn about Active Directory as a whole and how to deploy and configure it over just being able to pull off one or two attacks in certain situations. And finally, we come to networked boxes. And if you want to be a good penetration test or red teamer, then you need to be working on networked machines. There are so many important skills that these labs give you, like how to pivot and tunnel, how to loot machines, how to chain attacks, keeping good notes, persistence, and the list goes on. The first time I did something like this, my notes were completely out of control. And every time I came back to it, I was wasting time trying to reestablish shells and figure out what I'd done before. I thought that I knew what I'd done, but I missed out a lot of small details details that came back to bite me later on. Now, I hope that's enough to help convince you to get started on your journey. And if you have the time, then I also recommend to build at least one CTF machine and submit it to the platform. Going through the motions of building, configuring, testing, and deploying a CTF box is going to give you some real insights into the technology you're using and the attacks you're trying to simulate. It's a great exercise, and I think everyone should have a go at it at least once and also gives you more things to put on your CV or talk about during your interview.
And that's a wrap on how to get started with Try Hack Me. Remember, the journey of learning cybersecurity is a marathon, not a sprint. And Try Hack Me offers a fantastic platform to build and hone your skills at your own pace. Keep pushing forward, stay curious, and don't hesitate to dive into the community for support and motivation. If this guide has been helpful, then don't forget to like and subscribe and share the video if you want to. And let me know down in the comments below how your Try Hack Me journey is going, or if there are any other topics you'd like me to cover. Catch you next time.